that's really like that be part of my purpose of doing the interviews because I, I notice a lot of people they judge people off of just what they yeah. see on the internet but like with me actually meeting people i get to see like the real and it'd be like i right, he really a good person mm -hmm. she a good person they a good, you know like but I feel like people be so dehumanized with the internet and the drill scene. It's like a sitcom to them or something. They watch this shit, this person died. Oh, they just keep a track of the skull. Like it's a show, like, but I be want to do the interview so people could see like people, real personalities and, and understand people more. Even like understanding like people in the streets. Some people uh, look at somebody that's in the streets and be like, oh, you stupid, why you choose that route? Not knowing they probably didn't choose that route. Like some people I feel like did and I, I look at them as goofy honestly like if you didn't have to and you just chose this shit i kind of don't i don't really respect that but it's other people who was kind of born into that shit and or like i ain't gonna say like born into it because but it's like it'd be certain situations that happen and your emotions get the best of you like especially if you're a kid you might not know the best way to deal with something so somebody do something to you you might just know respond Right. Instead of thinking like, you know what, it ain't even worth this. It's gonna, it's gonna be way worse down the line. And next thing you know, boom, you in a war. And it's like you know, everybody got different reasons or stories of how they got in the streets. And I just be wanna like bring that to the forefront so people could see like, I right, maybe they not as stupid as you think or as dumb or just you know crashing out like it be mistakes you made as a kid that you can't undo. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I come up with a lot of guys that wasn't in the streets, but I was into the streets, you know, at a young age, I jumped off the porch, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, 13, you feel me? So it's like, a lot of my guys and my homies that I come up with, a lot of them, they won the street, they they they, they won GD, they won Stone, but they, you know, we got a neighborhood that's called 4-6, 4-6 line. So, they rep 4-6 line, but they want GD, they want BD, they want Stone, they want none of that. They want with none of that, man. But, you know, some some like me, my brothers, you know, I was around that. They didn't have brothers and cousins and stuff like that that was into the streets. I've been around that, man, all my life. Yeah. So that's the route that, that I, I took, but I didn't want my kids to take my route. You know what I'm saying? For sure. You know, everybody choose and, and do what they want to do at, at some point in time, you know. Yeah, but. That's another another thing you just said. It's, it's definitely a fact. Like, it's a lot of people who don't even game bang and in the streets. And not even, like, intentionally. It's sometimes yeah. you be like, this is where you grew up at. These are really your friends. Like, these people yeah. you knew since kindergarten. Yeah. And, but y'all y'all neighborhoods don't get along with that neighborhood. And you guilty by association. Yeah, it'd be like, what you, you gonna either be prey or you gonna get with it. Like, cause you, you could be like, I ain't with shit. And now your own hood going on you too. And they going on you cause they think you one of them. Versus, right. I these my people, fuck them. And a lot of shit be like that. Like I know people that real life don't claim nothing, but then died behind that shit or. I ain't gonna lie, I got, I got a homie like, a weak man, like this my man, he, he always kept it with him when he was coming up as young, but he never was into the gang. But anything I get into it with anybody that's, you know, whatever, and he wasn't that type of person, he gonna rock out with me. He gonna rock out with me regardless. You know, I got a lot of guys like that, but I don't put them in that type of situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I keep them away from that. And uh, he willing to rock out with me. You know what I'm saying? And stood up for me and everything when I got into old people, so that's true. Yeah. Uh, One more, well not one more thing, but like, oh yeah. I had seen, I don't know if it was an interview you did or your own podcast. You had said something like, Duck, you was on the phone with Duck, like right before he passed away? Yeah, that was an interview I did. Oh, I yeah. did an interview and uh, uh, you know, we was talking all that day, like that morning I had FaceTimed up, you know, I just got to FaceTime, you know, my son Ruga always stayed on me. I said, you gotta, you gotta upgrade, you know? So when I called Duck that morning, <laughs> Duck fell out the chair. He was like, oh, this nigga got an iPhone. <laughs> Hell no, you know? So 
He was like, man, cuz we playing cards tonight. So I'm like, all right, bet, what time? So he was like, I gotta go downtown and get, you know, his son, something for his birthday coming up on the 11th. So I was like, all right. So we've been talking back and forth all that day. So the next time I talked to him was like three, four something. And uh, we was talking. And then, like, he was still downtown. He never left downtown. He's still down there, but he was look. He he wanted to look at me in the phone when I called him back. You know what I'm saying? He was watching, look, looking like this. And I'm studying like, where we gonna play it? Cause he where we gonna play at my mama house? But he never looked me into the phone. He kept turning his head. That's because he saw them niggas run across the car. He yeah. was watching whoever that was went across the car. You know what I'm saying? And then even after that, cause he was sitting in the car. So even after that, he had to get out the car. You know what I'm saying? So when I talked to him, he was just looking. You know what I'm saying? Then, like I said, about six, seven minutes later, his mama called my phone, holler. Oh, let's go, you know, go, go, go check on my baby. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, what? You know, check on who? She like, duck. They talking about they shot him. Yeah. So when we was going to play cards that I was pulling up to there, I had to ride right past there and shoot downtown. So, you know, when y'all was actually on the phone, how did the conversation end? Did he ever hang up or like it happened while y'all was on the phone? No, I hung up. So it happened like right after it had to happen after I got off the phone, like a little while, like a few minutes. So probably when he was on the phone with me, he probably stepped out when they went across the car. He stepped out the car probably because he was outside. Yeah. So that had to happen just like that. As soon as he got off the phone with me, it was like four something. It happened just like that. Boom. As soon as he got off the phone with me, I said, all right, cuz. When he hung up, I hung up. Because, you know, they was uh, basically saying, like, he was shopping. So I, I was wondering, like, you know, with him being in the car and probably, like, seeing him already, why even uh, get out? and. Like was was it to continue shopping or to defend itself or or you? Nah, it was it was I believe to continue shopping. You know they say he was waiting in line. Uh, I mean he probably didn't even know who they was. You know what I'm saying? You know he you know he he duck man. So yeah. if he out there he see some niggas run past his car, of course he gonna pay attention to him. You know yeah. he gonna look. You know what I'm saying? It's just his instinct. You know what I'm saying? Because who he is, so he gotta watch everything. You know what I'm saying? So he probably figured like them niggas ain't on none. You know what I'm saying? Because I I be with y'all around, they be like, man, they ain't on nothing. They ain't on That's probably what happened. He jumped out, got out the car, continued the shopping, to go find his baby son for his birthday. So I really believe that's what happened. So, you know, when he first passed away, it was so many rumors, like the fingers were getting pointed at a lot of people. And one of the people was like his own people, like FBG. Like when that was going on, was like his family or the inside uh, sources, like was y'all just as confused and maybe like almost believing the rumors too? Or like, was it uh, like- Who I, did it? Yeah, like when they were saying like, I right, cash and, and young and all this back though, like was that like like ridiculous to y'all? Was it like, I don't know. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, uh. I didn't believe, I didn't, I didn't, that right there, I couldn't believe Dutchy, Young, Cash, you know, I never believed nothing like that. I could never believe like they would backdoor him. I never, when they, when people were saying that, you know, you have all type of rumors, 051, uh, you know, Young and them, or, you know what I'm saying? I didn't believe none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't believe Young and Dutchy and Cash did that to Duck. Cause I know me knowing, being around Duck, I know I know my cousin's feelings towards people he messed with. I know he loved Young, I know he loved Dutchie. You know what I'm saying, Cash. And they father, he look at him like a father figure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So whatever they had going on, man, uh, you know, Duck was dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? They had their own issues or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Duck really had love for them. and. I know they really had love for Duck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 